Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Daily Critique. We're going to be looking at another image today from the Big Bend National Park Workshop. This image was created by Judy. Judy shot this with an Olympus E620, a very long effective focal length, and we'll talk more about that. So effective focal length of 527 millimeters. The exposure trio is ISO 200, F7.1, and 1 320th of a second. I just want to talk about some technical things right away. Judy is shooting with an Olympus camera here that has image stabilization built into the body. So she's able to get a very sharp picture where she wants it to be critically sharp here. Hand holding at an effective focal length of 527 millimeters at a shutter speed of 1 320th. So lower than what we would say would be a classic shutter speed 1 um, over our focal length times 2. So without the IS here built into the camera, really uh, be looking at shutter speeds of a thousandth or fifteen hundredth or two thousandth of a second. So really neat how Judy's taking advantage of the great image stabilization built into this camera body. So I just want to say right away this is a handheld shot. And there are so many things about this image that really sort of go against uh, some of the guidelines that we can get roped into um, in terms of doing uh, photography of flowers, but just of photography in general. So much of the macro work like this that we think about, we think about being on the tripod, being very technical with the tripod. Judy's shooting handheld here. Um, we also hear over and over and over again to shoot our macro shots uh, in quiet light or soft light. And you can tell from the movement of light here. You can tell from the way that shadows are falling. We see the shadows here. This is the brightest light of the day. This is a two and a half hours or so after the sun has come up. So it's in the brightest light of the day. A real strong top light here. Um, and relative to this subject matter, I think the quality of light is really beautiful in terms of the way all the main subjects are separating and the way that I'm perceiving them as far as objects um, in a photograph. And the other thing that I want to mention here and then go more into it is just the idea of a composition um, that breaks some rules um, and has a feeling of being more off-handed and not such a strong overlay of classical design that we could find pleasing. Main subject and the shot is pretty close to the center. Um, and then you have some tangencies. So, so instead of getting everything to separate, uh, you have uh, one of the main subjects touching part of this subject is a really important idea in the image and then this subject comes straight across and is on tangent with the apex of the energy of the subject. So you have some tangencies here um, but those things are creating a tension for me as the viewer that's sort of resolved by other things in the image. Um, one of the things that I love about this image is this subject matter. It almost has the feeling for me of the hook where you pull things off of the stage. It's almost an implication that this has been put in and then it's going to move out. And it has such a strong energy. I think that it allows for having some of these tensions in here where these ideas are uh, competing with each other. There are positive and negative space shapes that are being created that could really overwhelm the shot. Having this out here in such a strong place in the image I think helps these tensions uh, to play out but not to become overwhelming. And another thing to me that's just stunningly beautiful that's a lot more subtle is how this defocus background, so uh, the combination of compression, which I want to talk more about in just a second, the idea of compression and also um, the combination of the distance of the main subjects to the camera and then the distance of the background, these out of focus shapes um, that we're seeing back in here do such a beautiful job of repeating the concept of shape and the main subjects. This really beautiful sense of the movement of the main flower here. You also get the archetypal shape of a heart. When you look at these other positive and negative space shapes, they really do a stunning job of rhyming the energy of all of these subjects uh, that are in the foreground of the shot. Not only that, um, when I look at the background colors, they either do a really beautiful job of harmonizing with the colors in the foreground, so there's quite a strong sense of yellow um, back here, uh, and that's obviously harmonizing with one of the main subjects. There's also a sense of sort of rust or orange and the beige. Then you get the faintest hint of uh, purple that can complement the yellow, and you get the green that comes back here. So really beautiful terms of the way color is playing. 
And then another thing that happens is in some areas you start to push towards a real rich black. And in the same way that this real high contrast, very bright, very powerful archetype, almost like a saw blade subject, can help to balance out some of the tangents, these intentions that are in here. I think the black, the real rich black, is helping to do that as well. Um, one of the things I really want to encourage you to be uh, inspired by in terms of Judy's work and one of the ways she really inspired in the workshop is she just chose to work in a very different way. I mean, the Big Bend National Park Workshop is like a lot of our um, big landscape national park workshops. A lot of people are trying to work literal and they're shooting very wide and they're doing a lot of technical things. They're filtering, they're shooting multiple brackets of exposures, maybe even multiple brackets of focus to extend depth of field and all that's very, very technical. And Judy shot with a small camera. She shot handheld. She also shot a lot of times with extraordinarily long effective focal lengths. And it's another way to abstract um, the world around us. We start to get so much compression that we can bring ideas together in an image that just don't exist together in reality. And Judy's done that here, and that can be powerful. But another thing that Judy's doing here is she's working in a quality of light that we just uh, move away from way too much as a photographer. There are lots and lots of visual ideas that not only look good in the hard light, they really need the hard light to work. And one of the things that's helping these tangent ideas to still have a sense of being in their own space is the hard light. It's not just the shallow depth of field. Um, and the other thing too is that Judy's working with a smaller camera here. It's not about the camera. Um, it's, it's really about seeing and it's about our vision. And one of the amazing things in this workshop is we had an incredibly motivated group of photographers who really pushed during the shooting sessions to see as much as they could. And we had people that saw in very, very different ways. So uh, we could be inspired by a lot of different ways of seeing. And I've threatened forever to get a very long zoom, like a 100 to 400. I just haven't shot that way. And Judy just totally inspired me on the workshop to finally do that. And in fact, I've ordered a 100 to 400 zoom so I can play around with the idea of compression and seeing in a different way. I just wanted to show you a couple of other images of Judy's uh, that I really enjoyed in a portfolio that she showed at the end of the workshop. This is another image that was shot in very, very hard light, and you can see it. And it's just stunning to me how the hard light is really playing beautifully here. Another thing about this image, there's a ton of information. We're m too much of the time just trying to simplify and simplify and simplify. And Judy's working with a very dense field of information here in the photograph to, for me still uh, works beautifully. Here's a little bit more classical image in terms of color and uh, graphic subject matter and simple subject matter. Very, very beautiful. Another very a long, effective focal length shot. Just want to say a big thank you to Judy for being open uh, to sharing these images with a whole Mindful Eye community. We'd love to hear your feedback about the video today. I want to say a huge thank you to you for being here. I hope to see you again soon on the Daily Critique.